Hello, all you people out there in TV land. My name is Papa Emeritus Stu, also known as CV Studios, also known as Kurt. And today, we are looking at my Papa Emeritus Stu costume from the band Ghost. Today, I'm going to be giving you a look at my Papa Emeritus 2 cosplay. Now, this can act as a little bit of a cosplay tutorial for you. I'm going to show you all the pieces that I use for my costume, as you saw in this intro. And I'm going to give you an overview of each of the little pieces, where I got them from, and how to do a pretty good Papa Emeritus costume for not a whole lot of money, depending on the level that you want to go. Now, the reason I say that is there's a couple of big things that are going to make a huge difference in cost. We're going to touch on those through the course of this video, but I will point out immediately that, uh, yeah, this silicon mask, these are very expensive. So, without further ado, let's get into it, and we're going to start with the head. Now, you have a lot of options for Papa Emeritus 2. You have many latex offerings, including the one from Trick or Treat Studios, officially licensed. You're going to hear a lot about Trick or Treat Studios in this video. There are people that make silicon replicas. There are people that have made their own Papa 2 replicas. There are people who can do, uh, with their shaved heads, do a really good Papa Emeritus with just face paint. You've got lots of options. I opted to go for the O'Neill FX uh, Papa Emeritus 2. And this was uh, commissioned back in 2017 or 2018. It was a few years ago that I organized this one. The way this works is it's a full head silicon mask. It's a very, very stretchy rubber. It covers the entire head. Uh, and that's very much the way that the Papa 3 uh, Cardinal Copia, Papa 4 masks are made. And the makeupless Papa 2 from the Papaganda music videos. Now, this has had a bit of wear and tear on it. In fact, tear is an excellent word. It's actually got a big rip down one side, right down the neck. This will eventually be patched and repainted. I just haven't gotten to that yet. Unfortunately, it did happen when I wasn't wearing it. It's just one of the things with silicon masks is they're very, very durable and very stretchy. They do have a ripping point. So something to bear in mind, not all silicon masks are created equal. This bad boy cost me a couple of hundred dollars. Now, I wanted something that had a lot of movement, was very comfortable. I didn't want to be wearing a latex mask, as I find that those ones, you sort of breathe into them, and it's kind of like wearing a plastic bag over your head. This, while very expensive, was an excellent choice for this costume because it was very, very comfortable, very easy to move and eat and breathe and talk and drink and do all of that fun stuff when I wore it to the con. So that is the Papa Emeritus mask, or at least my one. Now, you can go for a latex one. You will get a fantastic result using latex mask. Uh, it will actually hold shape a little bit more. It won't conform to your face quite as much as this. So it's going to give a little bit more of a Papa 2 look. But I feel like this can't be beat. Part 2 of the head is, of course, the mitre. Or the Pope hat. Now this is a lovely piece from Trick or Treat Studios. They've been making these for many, many years. It does have the nice streamers down the back with just some screen printed crucifixes on the back. It's got really, really nice rickrack edging, that silver sparkly edging that you see around there. It's got a really, really nice embroidered patch on the front, and the fabric choices are quite nice with this. Now, it's not as accurate as it could be. These do get more accurate, but you'll be paying a lot more for a more accurate one. This guy, I picked up for about 40 bucks or so. Wasn't a huge amount of money. And obviously, with this silicon mask on the foam head, it doesn't sit quite where it needs to. Typically, these would sit about here. And as you saw in the intro, it does sit quite well on my head. The one thing that I will say about the Trick or Treat Studios mitres is they do need some padding on the inside just to hold their shape a little bit better. And so I've got some craft foam inserts just cut to shape for the front and a band for the back. And that just helps hold it in a little bit more shape than the original mitre did. Following on from there, we do have two final pieces for the head, the visage of Papa Emeritus. The big thing that you are going to need is black grease paint, white grease paint, and a white contact lens. Grease paint's nice and easy. I pick these up every Halloween. They're about five bucks at my local discount stores. They're great, uh, excellent to have just palettes of this stuff on hand. Now, this is a grease. It's applied, uh, I like to do the kiss method. 
uh, the way that Gene Simmons and co do, which is applying, basically smearing a bunch onto my fingers, wiping it onto my face, evening it out with a makeup sponge, and then powdering it to set it. The reason you powder it is so that the surface itself doesn't stay greasy. It stops it from transferring too much onto either clothing or your masks or anything like that. Very, very important and helps it to stay on your face much, much better. The black is for around the eyes and the white is to paint in your ears. Now, as you saw in the intro and you'll see in the beauty shots at the end, I did not paint my ears because I don't feel like it tonight. I've just done the black around the eyes, nice and straightforward. The contact lens, on the other hand, now this is a piece that I'm not going to give you advice for. I use party lenses, but I've been wearing contact lenses for nearly 20 years. I actually use them to see, so I am almost daily wearing contact lenses. Go to an optometrist and have an optometrist fit and get you the correct contact lenses for your vision. If you've never worn a contact lens before, eye care is very important. Absolutely go and talk with your local optometrist. They will almost certainly help you from not getting something jammed in your eye or not getting an eye infection from using cheap contact lenses. Do not fuck around with your vision. It's really, really important. Do not ask me for advice on contact lenses. Go to an optometrist. Now that we've got the head of Papa Emeritus out of the way, we have a whole body to clothe. How do we begin with that? Well, we begin with the under tunic, or what is known as a cassock. My cassock for Papa Emeritus is a long priest costume from HalloweenCostumes.com or FunCostumes.com. Now this, uh, I will throw the exact model up on the screen now, but this is a long polyester robe. It's floor length, so it's quite, quite long. Uh, it is full length sleeves and it buttons all the way down the front. When we did this group, and I'll throw in some photos now, the Nameless Ghouls wore these exact same costumes under theirs. The reason that we use this is it's a long, very, very close robe for what the ghouls and Papa wears. Papa actually wears one of these under his flowy robe, the outside one, or the chossable. This was the cheapest way we could do it for a group. There are better options out there. If you were going to go for something a little bit higher quality, you could go to an actual uh, priest robe store. Uh, a place that sells cassocks and vestments and things like that and you could get just a plain black priest cassock and that would work fantastically for you. I totally recommend that but this, this fit the price and it works really really well for what I want to do. Next up, the Chossable. Now this is the standard Trick or Treat Studios Papa 2 robe. This thing you can pick it up for under 100 bucks. It's fairly cheap and it's very effective for Papa Emeritus's robe. Now, the crucifixes down the front are not embroidered. They are just a screen printed applique. You do have your black satin down the sides for this whole robe. It is an entire robe, front and back. You've got your green lining on the inside of the sleeves. It doesn't go the whole way inside. It's just a small strip, but it certainly gets the point across. This is actually quite light as well, which is really nice, but it does, however, give the look of a much, much heavier fabric. You do have the nice lace piece down the front, which is fairly accurate. And in the back, we have two Velcro dots stitched in, and that helps you open and close the vestment around your neck so that it's not tight trying to drag it over a mask. I highly recommend the Trick or Treat Studios robe. Eventually, I will get some embroidered appliques to go over the front to cover those crucifixes, but for now, I think we work pretty well. Now, it's thoroughly inappropriate to wear priest robes and nothing underneath. Not going to make a low-hanging fruit joke there. Not going to go for the lowest common denominator. It's just something that you shouldn't do. So, as pants for Papa Emeritus 2, the simplest option is just a pair of plain men's dress slacks. These work fantastically. They're a nice light fabric. They breathe really well. They're comfortable. You can get these at even places like Walmart. You can find them in Australia at Kmart or Target. They don't have to be anything fancy as the majority of them, aside from the cuffs down the bottom, you're not going to see. I tend to wear a pair of dress pants that I either have on hand or if I'm traveling, I will usually take a pair of black chinos, something that's not completely skinny jean fit, but has a little bit of room to move. That's usually the best way to go about it is wear something that kind of looks a little bit business casual and you can get away with that but a pair of straight black dress slacks are gonna be the best way to go for that. 
Papa's Shoes. Now, the shoes for Papa Emeritus, we really didn't get to see a whole lot of, and over the course of the Infestissimum, and obviously the If You Have Ghosts tours, any of the tours and shows supporting those two releases, you do see Tobias wearing a bunch of different shoes as Papa 2. The two that I like to use, I have just plain dress shoes. I find these to look really, really nice under the robes. They have that really nice sort of clergy look to them. These are faux leather. They weren't very expensive. I think they're about $50. They're a fairly cheap pair of just dress shoes. They work really, really nicely. If I'm traveling though, I do find that these, just a pair of squared toed dress boots, work a lot nicer. I find these to be a little bit more comfortable. They don't have laces. They are a zip up the side. And these are the same boots that I wear for my Papa Emeritus 3. I actually put a spat over the top, which covers these really nicely. And I also wear them for my Meliora and Prickel Ghouls. Just a really nice option. Coming up to our final pieces now, we are looking at gloves. One of the things that you will notice with Papa Emeritus, both 1, 2, and 3, and to a lesser extent Papa 4 and Cardinal Copia, is you really don't see Tobias's wrists much. In the Papa 3 Dead Astaire look, he does wear shorter white gloves, so you do see that every now and again. But for the main priest robes, for the main dress robes that Papas wear, you do not see the wrists. My way of getting around that was wearing a pair of long, just opera gloves. Now, you can even cut these off a morph suit. In fact, these are just the first ones that I grabbed, and it looks like that's exactly what these were. These are very simple black lycra gloves, and you want them to go up to the elbow. This allows the sleeve of your cassock to sit down, and then your leather glove to sit over the top. And as you move, if your sleeve happens to ride up or anything like that, you don't see any skin. Also makes it fairly comfortable to wear because you don't have that polyester rubbing up against you, as it can be a little uncomfortable, and it helps to wick sweat away. The next part that you wear with this glove setup is just a pair of black leather gloves. Now these are just black men's dress gloves, as you can see there. They are very, very plain and simple. Um, I think these ones were from H&M a couple of years ago. And really, it's super, super simple. You just wear them over the top. That's it. That's a pair of gloves. This is the basic setup that Papa 2 used. This is the basic setup that Papa 3 also used. For dressier occasions, he did have the Majesty Black gloves with the nails, very, very slim fit sort of design. They look really nice. But for Papa 2 and for most of Papa 3's touring shows, just simple like this works fantastically. Very, very good option and fairly cheap to do. Find them in winter or find them on Amazon. They'll be a really cheap solution for your glove problems. The final and most unnecessary piece of this costume, you don't need this to do the costume, but it really helps get into character, is Papa 2's staff. Now this is a replica from Trick or Treat Studios. I don't know if they still sell these, but I have a feeling that they do. Uh, it's a very, very lightweight uh, assembly out of PVC tubes and injection molded plastic or blow molded plastic for the Grucifix Scepter top. It's really, really simple. It is a bunch of interlocking pieces. They're just tubes that connect in. So it comes in three pieces in a plastic bag. They just pop together and you've got a staff. Now this works really, really well if you're traveling because it fits very nicely into most suitcases. You can also just take the tube in like a poster tube or something like that. Very, very easy. But once it's assembled, it does have that really, really nice look that Papa 2's staff did have. One of the modifications that I did, as I'm fairly short, I actually trimmed about two and a half inches off the end of the bottom tube. I put a piece of craft foam around the bottom and then got a walking stick end and just popped that over the end of this tube. And that just means I've got a solid rubber end to my tube. It's not going to make a weird hollow thunk sound as I tap it down to the ground. Small detail, but makes things a lot more comfortable and a lot less irritatingly noisy to work with. And that's about it. That's about all you need for a Papa Emeritus 2 costume. So, uh. I'm going to get into costume and show you how we do this.
Okay, so as you can see, I have got the black eye makeup and my white contact lens in. Now, the really important thing to remember when you are doing makeup like this, contact lens goes in first so that your hands are clean. Very, very important when you're putting contact lenses or anything in your eye that your hands are clean. And so that's why eyes first, then the eye makeup. From here, we proceed to get dressed. Now I've already got the pants and boots on, so I'm not going to show you that. I do have just a plain black undershirt. I can certainly recommend one of these ones as they wick moisture away from you. They make you cooler as you wear them. Something like this, it's a very hot costume, very much recommend. So I'm gonna move this mirror out of the way and we're going to get dressed up. Now, before I go any further, oh, as you can hear, my voice is a little bit muffled with this mask. Now, typically when you're wearing something like a silicon mask, having facial hair doesn't really help. Normally I would shave, but I'm not doing that for a YouTube video. So, here we are, as you would see. Now, you can see that I have not painted any black or white around my ears, and uh, that's because I just don't care. But for now, I'm going to get into the full costume. I will then do a reveal and uh, give it up for Papa Emeritus. Do. Oh, and uh, as a side note, I actually can't find the other one of this glove. Uh, so I have a thinner pair of gloves that I'm going to wear. So my hands are going to look a little bit dainty and they're going to have a zipper on them. But, uh, well, sucks to suck, I suppose. Give it up for a ghoul! And there you go. This is my Papa Emeritus II costume from Ghost, or in this era, technically Ghost BC. As you can see, this costume looks great. I'm very, very happy with it. And really, aside from the mask, it's pretty cost effective. Now, it does get quite a lot of airflow. You've got very, very good opportunity for poses and movement, and it's very iconic. And as you can see, that mask looks excellent. The mask looks great. Um, the thinner you are, the less stretched the mouth gets. And that's one of the big things, big reasons that I want to get thinner. But let's be real. That's pretty evil. Ha. Huh. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you as part of the clergy. Um, and actually, I'm off to go and see Ghost in just a couple of days, and uh, that's going to be in Europe, not here. This has been filmed way in advance. But I will not be wearing this. I have not decided at this stage if I will be wearing a costume or not. If you'd like to see more Ghost content, please let me know. I would love to do some more deep dives on costumes and masks of the Ghost lore that I do possess. Feel free to like and comment. Comment down in the comments which papa is your favorite. Let me know which ghost song is your favorite down in the comments. And until next time, if you have ghost, you have everything.
Alright, now I gotta get the fuck out of this. This is a fire hazard, and it's really, really hot in this costume.